Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. We're up to part three of this week's episode of the show. We're diving even deeper into our conversation with this week's guest. Let's continue exploring their inspiring journey. If you've missed part one and two, definitely go back and catch up. Also, if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you soon. Yeah, going okay. back up again and then, you know, there's yeah. a steady struggle and then we've gone up and we're excited and we're pregnant. And then, you know, you go into that, that ultrasound to see your baby's heartbeat. <laughs> Sorry. It's hard. To, it's actually sometimes hard to relive these moments, isn't it? Um, yeah. And there's no heartbeat. Take right? So we've lost the baby. We've had a miscarriage. And boy, does that come crashing down again. Like you just, you know, yeah. what you've always wanted, what, what you thought you then had. It's sort of that loss of not only yeah. a loss of a baby, but a loss of what you thought you were going to to experience. Like it's a bit of a, a grief in a, in a few different ways, really, isn't it? So, yeah, we, we it's had, of had eye, that isn't loss. It's, just, that it's just vanished into thin air. Oh, it sucks. Yep. Yeah, and then yeah. and they just sort of say, oh, you know, you're just one in four. <laughs> Thanks, doctors. <laughs> one in four, like, there's no reason. It just, you know, just didn't no. didn't progress. We're like, okay. It's frustrating to not know why you've lost that baby, you know. And I know not everything might have a reason, but we're very much everything happens for a reason type of people. Mm -hmm. So then there's that frustration of, well, why? Why me? Why us? Like, you know, we love kids. We, we're married. We've got a stable home we we want this baby so badly we would give it nothing but love why has it been taken from us like why <laughs> so you know we didn't get that answer right away but i think we might have got there <laughs> um two weeks after the loss i turned 30 had my 30th birthday jake's like let's um let's plan a, a cruise you know let's go on a big a big holiday and take your mind off the the infertility because it's yeah. it's hard to just have every every month passing by and still no baby. So off we go on our on our planning for the cruise. We hadn't quite gone on the cruise yet because two weeks after my 30th birthday, I um I found a lump in the shower, a breast lump. And I thought, oh, that's not a good thing. That doesn't feel normal, right? So off we went to have a check. We went and got a, um, a scan done. And the doctor said, you're all fine. It's just because you had a miscarriage. You had like a clogged milk duct, you know, like it, it was just a, a bit of a fluctuation in hormones. It's caused this little lump, but it's nothing malicious. It's totally fine. We're like, amazing. Like that's, that's, that's all you want to know. Like peace of mind, right? Off we go on our cruise. Happy days. <laughs> yeah. But um, we got back from the cruise and I still had the lump. So time had passed, you know, a couple of months had passed now and I'm like, said to Jake, why, why is it still there? Like, I'm not really familiar with, with pregnancy. Like, we were only pregnant for, for nine short weeks, right? So why is this lump still here? Jake's like, I don't know, but based on what he, you know, his close-to-home encounters with yeah. with the breast cancer research, he's like, I think you should get a second opinion. Just just go and, go and find out. So I went to a different doctor. We found a different doctor to just have, you know, a different set of eyes. And they did uh, another scan and the scan didn't look normal. They're like, no, that, that doesn't look like a clogged milk duct. And it's too far since that miscarriage. Like, we don't think that's what it is. You need to go, you need to go and get a, a biopsy. So we got the biopsy done and we were due to get the results um, from the specialist, from the breast surgeon, right? So we were, we were on our way there and I'd gone and I'd, gone with Jake to, uh, we'd gone to meet my best friend's fourth born baby, right? Off we are cuddling this beautiful fourth. newborn. Fourth baby. I know. <laughs> we just wanted one. <laughs> Come on, <I> Will. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so we're meeting her beautiful baby and then off we went to get our results. We had dinner booked in to celebrate these happy results that we were expecting um, because we're very optimistic people and then we're even due to go to the real life life, which is like a charity, a charity um, walk around the oval raising money f for cancer. Um, so we had a big sort of big night planned. We didn't expect these results to come in, you know, 
uh, anything other than you're all clear. So they kind of didn't know. We were at the uh, we're at the doctor's office, and I, I specifically remember, um, you know, they closed the door as they do, and they just slid this box of tissues towards us over the desk, and my heart just sank. I was like, <laughs> like that can't be a good thing. Why why is he pushing tissues towards us? Like, has he got something? some bad news, like your mind's racing. It's probably yeah. all in a matter of a millisecond that this occurs, but you just, you just sort of, you're going a bit crazy in your head. It's all very slow-mo. And I remember yeah. he just said, um, I'm really sorry we've got your results, but uh, you've got breast cancer. And I remember just hearing those words and just, it's just like disbelief and shock. Like honestly, like I said to you earlier, Andy, you never think this is going to happen to you. you. It's something that happens to people that, that you hear about, but you're never going to gonna experience that yourself. And so to hear those words, like it's, um, it's terrifying. You go through all these, all these emotions, I guess, all in that space of, of, of a pause. Um, you know, there's, there's shock, there's fear, fear that you're going to die. Um, then there's guilt, guilt that if you were to die, like, you're leaving your beautiful husband, your beautiful mum, dad, brothers, friends, you know, your dog, like, oh, God, you just, you, you're in panic. Yeah. You just, yep, you can't help but control these thoughts. And then before they even were able to say anything else, I had another emotion pop in where I was just overwhelmingly grateful, like this huge feeling of gratitude, not, not to be told I have cancer, but for what Jake had done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I looked at him and I'm like, what you did, what you did is, is going to be the reason I'm going to live. Like that's, that's raised money to raise race, you know, research and, and, and information and to better yeah. my treatment. And I'm about to, to go through this, but because of you, I'm going to have a better outcome. Like, yeah. He's what a great amazing. perspective. <laughs> It's perspective again, though, isn't it? it? Comes back into that that realm of perspective. You've you've yeah. yeah. Mm. How did he? How was he in that chair when he heard it? I think I couldn't. Um, I couldn't help but see his face said it all too. Like obviously, he was deeply sad. He does explain to me later that he was sad for me, like, but I'm, I'm sad for him. We're both sad for each other. So I think mm. he was obviously just also knowing, knowing what, what the treatment entails and knowing what that journey is about to look like. He was, he was just bummed out that that was about to happen. And obviously you, you, you worried, but he was, he was very strong, strong. Like he instantly went into, I don't know whether it's just a man thing or whether it's just, personality thing but you know just like okay what do we got to do like give me give me the uh the list of how we can fix this and he just he just wanted to to step up and and protect me and and make it go away <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so you you're in the room and you mentioned before in the conversation that you were going to do fucking fundraiser that night fundraiser for breast for cancer not just breast cancer but yeah i'd lost but, um, yeah. A, a good friend to leukemia so we were mm. off to raise money for my friend um yeah we didn't well we did go we we heard the news we were both just so shell-shocked that we're like okay well that wasn't what we expected like you know we had i had tears we had we had moments and i turned to jake and i said am I, am I going to die? Like, be honest with me. Do you, do you think, cause they told me it was the most aggressive type of cancer you could possibly have. It was the fastest growing. It had spread to my lymph nodes, you know, like we were, they, they tell you this rundown or, or they spit it all out at you. I suppose they have to, but they're like, you're about to have 18 months of treatment ahead of you, you know, and we hope mm -hmm. that that works. Like it spread to your lymph nodes. So you're going to have to um, have surgery you're going to have to have the lump removed and whatever other cancerous cells we can possibly find. You're then going to entail six months of chemotherapy. Um, you will lose your hair. 
and you will then have radiation every day for a month. Um, and yeah, when those eight, and then you're going to have a, a specific treatment, which tingles here, Andy, right? So there's this specific treatment because they knew which of the three types of breast cancer I had. Mine was HER2 positive, which is the name of the type of cancer mine was. There's an estrogen driven cancer, which would have meant I could never have babies because if I had that cancer, a pregnancy would bring that hormone up and your cancer would most likely reoccur. So yeah. in another nutshell, I'm really grateful that for the type of cancer I had, you know, I had this type of cancer that that was safe to possibly try for babies one day. But they're telling you this rundown of your treatment and and as great as that is that you might be able to have kids, it's a, it's a maybe and it's scary to think of this treatment that's ahead. Um, you know, you can't help but but panic that you might not have children, but I've lost my train of thought, Andy. <laughs> no, you're, you, 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 no, you, 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 you're right. I'm just picturing, I'm just picturing everything that you're saying, mm. but it doesn't yeah. matter, but you, you, you're going to lose your train of thought. And that's, don't worry about that. Cause that's authentic of no, what you're going through. People are, I've remembered. Go <laughs> <I'm> on. <so laughs> was people are witnessing. No, the people, people are witnessing currently. Like what? Yes. And that's, yeah. that's why this is important too. And I'll share an yeah. example of another guest later on about this yeah. moment. You, you do push on, the side of it, don't you? These, these things, it's a bit of trauma, I suppose. You sort of like, mm. you get through it and then you don't choose to think about that every day. Of course, you think about it every day, but not the feelings. Not in this way. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, sorry, I did lose lose my moment. But no. I remember they told me mine was HER2 positive um, type of breast cancer. And so there was this um, injection that they would give me. Um, it would be a six minute injection in your upper thigh and you would have it every single uh, week for uh, like 17 weeks and it would wow. just overlap. They couldn't do it during chemo, but as soon as you started radiation, they would start that injection. So that would bring me to the end of the 18 months. That final injection would have been the last part. It was um, called Herceptin, that injection, that type of drug. And that drug alone, the Herceptin injections, it, it costs one hundred thousand dollars, and what did Jake raise for breast cancer, Andy? <laughs> Jake raised a hundred thousand dollars, and I just looked at him and thought, "Well, that's creepy." Like, oh my god, there's so many amazing. weird. Yeah, there's so many. Things. Well, you've just labelled it creepy. I wasn't going to call it creepy, but there's so many because you have. I'm going to use it. There's so many creepy you know, points yet to come in this story. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, you're right. Oh, there are. Yeah, and well. I thought of more since we were chatting the other day. Like. There's so many moments oh, really? that they just they just fall into place. Oh. It's just crazy. We were so lucky. Yeah. So yeah, that that was. No, one you created part your own look. Like, oh, you, you, cre you, you, Jake, and you created your own look. There's no look here. I don't believe it anyway. <laughs> uh, like, I don't look know. at what whatever you believe, you've all whether done. it's yeah, whether it's God, whether it's you know the science. Obviously, thank you to the doctors and the science. That's a big part. Yeah. But you know yeah. the universe, whatever it is, like some things also went right despite this being a big obstacle and a big adversity it was it was definitely something that still we were so lucky like it was unlucky mm. but lucky i don't know how to explain i know it. what you mean <laughs> you know i know what you mean yeah. yeah yeah so yeah they've told us that that's what your treatment's about to be and and that's that's just amazing that's what jake's raised but because we're in australia it's another lucky part like in australia we have the medicare system where the government covers these costs so if we had have lived in in america we would have had to mortgage the house and come up with our hundred thousand dollars for that injection or just miss out join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way don't forget to subscribe we'll see you then